Well, good morning, beautiful. Oh, it's oh, it's so pretty. We're gonna get to that tractor here in a little bit. Uh, doing a little polishing today. Get our ceramic coating on. Not because it's filthy dirty and needs to be cleaned. Uh, it's slightly dirty and it needs to be protected. And so I just, I wanna get a, a wax or a, a ceramic coating in this case on there to protect that paint so that it stays shiny and clean and new and it's easier to clean next year. But we need to take an update out here first. We've got happenings. They got all the trusses put together for our uh, barn and uh, crane truck is here. They're gonna, they're gonna set them today. So by the end of the day, we'll at least have a skeleton frame on uh, our barn. This is again one of those we just stay out of their way kind of things. Let them let them do it and uh, anything they need, great, but they know what they're doing, they're professionals. So we let the professionals work. We'll come check on it in a while, see how the progress is going. All right, well, let's get some rags. Are we gonna foam it? I don't know if I need to foam it. Yeah, we're gonna foam it. Yeah, we're going to. Get the dirt off of the... Yeah, I mean, it's not a lot, but like this, we want to clean this up and uh, got to get all the dirt off the paint so we can put our ceramic coating on it. So I'm going to get some stuff around. We'll, uh, we'll make this thing really, really shiny. All right, we've got some of our foam ready to go. Uh, the foam, it's, obviously it's soap, um, but it also lubricates stuff because I could just spray it with water and wipe it down with a rag and probably get it pretty darn clean. But... Uh, I want to lubricate it and not scratch any of the paint or the finish on it and stuff. Uh, so the foam helps with that and it'll help melt some of the dirt off of the places like on the fenders and some of the plastic stuff that I'm not really going to scrub down and polish. We just want to get them clean. So uh, that's the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and then we're going to wipe it down. I've got a, one of the, uh, I'll show you in a minute, a, a synthetic clay bar kind of thing that I'm going to use ahead of this uh, uh, ceramic coating that we're gonna put on. I'm not using my spray on stuff. I'm using a higher quality again I'll show you in a minute, but let's let's fire this up I'm not gonna go crazy wiping it down Because um, well, I just I don't need to Dirt's not stuck on, caked on stuff like what we normally deal with. So I'm just kind of wiping down the stuff where I knew there was some spots, like over here. And now just a low pressure rinse. Okay, well we got all the soap off of it, I think. So, uh, quick uh, analysis, or I guess, if you know, oh, there's some soap, I missed some under that uh, track. Anyway, um, this tractor in certain aspects is gonna be easier to clean than the other ones because everything is so wide open. And the front axles and the rear end, especially underneath the cab in there, like look, you can see all the way through there. And so that area is gonna be a whole lot easier to clean out, but there's a lot more stuff to clean out with these tracks, those are gonna, <laughs> Those are gonna be a pain, but it's okay. It's okay, I'll deal with it. So, all right, um, now we're gonna use this thing. This is, uh, they call it a synthetic clay from Mothers, and basically it gets any contaminants and stuff that is stuck to the paint off of it so that we can polish it up real well. I need some instant detailer. This stuff, we gotta spray this on as a lubricant, use this, scrub the surface off, wipe it off with a rag, and dry it. And uh, then it'll be nice and smooth and uh, ready for our ceramic. We do have some real nice work platforms here. So this stuff, we just kinda spray it on a little bit and then use this and rub it down. Um, I know I can't, obviously, for the camera, but if you feel this, it's really smooth, but every now and then, right, right there, there's just a little bit of gritty stuff. And after we rub this stuff on it, 
it's silky smooth. There's absolutely nothing. So that's why we're, we're doing this, just to get all those little contaminants off the surface of the paint. All right, I have done all of the green panels, sheet panels and stuff on the tractor that I could reach. And now I'm gonna rinse it down one more time. Then we're gonna get towels and dry it. We're done with the water. Uh, something that I'm noticing here, notice how well the water beads up off of that. I highly doubt that there is any wax or ceramic or any kind of hydrophobic coating on them, but naturally clean paint is hydrophobic and it sheds water. So when you get all of the contaminants off of it, like we did with that uh, bar we were wiping it down with, the water just beads right off and it's practically dry there now. Now we dry. Keep it from getting water spots. We do have a water softener in our uh, office where the water supply is coming from for the faucets in the shop here. Uh, I do run soft water. I actually have a valve so I can switch it back and forth if I want to, but when we're cleaning equipment, I always try and have it on the soft water. I am not convinced that our water softener can keep up and do a great job though, so um, it's, it's better than nothing, but I have a feeling it would take an awfully big water softener to keep up with the water demand that we're using in the shop for washing tractors. And when we put that one in, we sized it for a bathroom in an office shop. So, oh, it looks so good. All right, I got that all dried off, everything that I needed to. We do have to let everything else dry though and let it be uh, good, dry. We might even wait till after lunch to start putting that ceramic coating on. Uh, it is more involved than the spray on stuff that i've been using on the other tractors but less than wax it, it's pretty easy to use so i'll show you but uh i got somebody coming to do something at the house i gotta go let him in oh look at that we got a truss well while i'm waiting for my tractor to dry we'll do a little light reading how to drive it in cold weather all right well i've had enough for reading for a little bit uh we're still drying out man it looks so good <laughs> oh it's beautiful um, but I'm going to go to lunch here real quick. I was reading through the comments on YouTube uh, here from yesterday's video where I showed this and uh, wanted to answer some questions and talk about the process and how we ended up with this tractor. So um, believe it or not, I, okay, so back up. You know that I've been talking about going to a track tractor for a long time. This is what I ideally wanted. I was pretty convinced that we would be looking at a used uh, two-track 8RT model probably even the older series, you know, like 8370 RT, not an 8R3, 8RT 370, there's a difference there. Uh, something in the 18, 19, 20 model range. Um, there's not a lot out there. I looked around back in uh, late fall, uh, November, December timeframe, trying to see what stuff was out there um, because we knew we were, we were thinking about it. It was something we were considering. So I did find um, a few around, there was one over in Indiana, Northern Indiana, that uh, it was a decent tractor, but it had 35 or 3,600 hours on it already. And not that that's a huge amount of hours, but it's to the point where we would start thinking about doing something or upgrading it anyway. And it was just, uh, do we buy something like that to get into tracks where it's not really a huge upgrade tractor wise, uh, but it's got tracks or do we keep looking and stuff and, um, we had kind of passed on the idea, decided we weren't going to do anything there for a while and keep looking here towards the, 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 the summer and, and fall. Uh, and then we went to Fort Wayne to the farm show. You guys remember that video where we went to the Fort Wayne farm show? They happened to have one of these there. And my dad walks up to the salesman and says, I'll take two. Just joking. Just joking. I thought he was just joking. But uh, started talking to the salesman and eventually it came out that, well, that one they had at the show was sold, but hey, we got this used one. Why don't you come look at that? So they did. Uh, and this is a different dealer. It's not the same dealer we ended up buying this from, but um, they had a used one that came in and we wanted to look at it and stuff. But the problem with it was uh, it had the wrong tracks on it. So we need 18 inch tracks for doing row crop work. Uh, there was a small part of me that said, I think I can get away with 18s on the front and 24s on the back, go a little bit wider, but I want to be able to use this on our anhydrous applicator to side dress corn with. 
And on 30 inch rows with a 24 inch track, that gives you three inches on each side before you're running over corn. That's not a lot of play. In theory, it's doable, but it doesn't give you much room. And if the corn gets too big, you're gonna have problems. Uh, so we decided the 18 inch all the way around would be a better thing. Well, this other tractor, this used one, it had 24s on the front, 30s on the back, wasn't gonna work. And as soon as the dealer told me that at the farm show, when they told us, I said, no, we can't do that. It's, I need it. I need to be able to go down the rows. And they said, oh, we can change the tracks. We can change the tracks. Like it was no big deal. We'll just change the tracks. All right. Well, let's talk then. It had 500 hours on it. It was a 2020 model. It was a nice tractor. And I thought, all right, well, if they're willing to change the tracks and we can make this happen, great. It was cheaper than buying a brand new one. And it was sort of feasible. So I had to switch arms. Well, anyway, we went through the process. They, uh, they had just taken it in on trade uh, or whatever. They had just gotten it to one of their locations. So Dad and I went down to look at it, and it was when it was really cold out. Um, but the tractor was sitting outside, and it wouldn't start. So I didn't even get to drive it when we went to look. And it was not in horrible shape by any means. It was in really good shape, but it had more um, wear or just... <sighs> There were scratches inside the cab. There was broken vents in the cab. There was, uh, what was the other big thing? There was something that was broken inside the cab. And I'm like, man, if I had a tractor like that, I'd take awfully dang good care of it. And that would just kill me to, to have it do that. And so it's just not a good sign. And on the one rear track, there was a huge gash in it, like, like a big, big cut in one of the treads in there, inside, inside the track. So um, now that didn't matter a whole lot because... Well, we weren't going to use those tracks anyway, right? We were going to put some narrow tracks on it. Anyway, I wasn't super impressed with the tractor when we went and looked at it. Um, so from there, we, uh, we got some pricing around, and, I, and they, had, they had given us a quote on that tractor the way it sat. And I said, well, I need to know what the tracks, you know, the difference in the tracks is going to be and stuff. And so they went through that. Well, turns out these tracks are expensive because not only did we need new belts, you also had to replace the bogey wheels. The idlers were fine, but the bogies had to, they, they put skinnier bogies on with the skinnier tracks. And all said and done, uh, it was gonna cost like over 40 grand uh, to put the different belts and tracks on it. Now the used ones were worth something, but not nearly enough. Uh, you know, I think it was 10 or 12,000 was all we were gonna get out of the used ones. And so it added 30,000 to the cost of the already expensive but decently priced used one which put it very close to what we could buy a brand new one for and so in the meantime while we were pricing that and kind of going through that process i really wanted to buy that tractor there was a point and i told the salesman from that dealer i said i'm 90 percent sure we're going to buy this it just comes down to what it's going to take to change the tracks they acted like it was no big deal which is why i thought oh all right you know it may be a five thousand dollar difference or 10 at the most and it, it wasn't it was 30 uh, and that really really changes that scenario so anyway um, in the meantime while we were waiting on pricing and stuff from them I called my normal salesman at our dealer that we deal with most of the time and I said hey I, we're looking at this do you have anything hoping that they would have an 8RT used something, because they've got 15 locations, you'd think somewhere they've got something used that would fit for us. And he says, I've got a brand new 8RX, that's all I've got. And I'm like, oh, that's gonna be, it's gonna be more than we wanna spend, but go ahead and work up the numbers and put a, put a price together. So he did, uh, we felt that they did really good job and were really aggressive on their pricing and we were happy with it. By the time we compared the two and figured what our options were, we decided that this was a better buy than the used one where we had to pay a bunch to change the tracks over. So that's how we ended up with this tractor. That was a long story, I know, but um, man, it's awesome. I, I could not be more excited about it, and that's, that's how I got here. Now, I've also gotten a few questions about did we trade the 8R, did we trade the 8430? Uh, the answer is no. Um, that's why we're selling this tractor. So we went back and forth on this quite a bit too. Um, we tend to keep um, our newer tractors and trade in the oldest one. In fact, when, I, when we had talked to the salesman about this, uh, this particular one, and um, I told you yesterday that they sold our, our combine, our old combine, that S680, uh, to a farmer who traded in an 8820. Uh, just for reference, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, an 8820 was made in the 80s, like 
82 to 88, I think, was the time frame when they made those. And they bought a S680, which is was the second biggest combine deer made at the time. That's absolutely huge, uh, made in 2014. It was such a massive upgrade. Um, people don't usually make that big of jumps. So the same salesman uh, that we deal with sold that, and then he went and, and uh, told his, his bosses or whoever, he said, well, yeah, I got a, a guy that wants to trade in an 8300 on an 8RX, and this salesman's like, where do you find these people from? Uh, but yeah, so this is the tractor that we don't use as much anymore. It's the one that's getting replaced, I guess. Uh, and they just kind of work their way down the line. And so the 8RX is going to plant corn. We're going to put it on the grain cart. We're going to side dress with it. We're going to do the things that I was using the 8R for, uh, the 335R. And then that 8335R, uh, I believe we're going to plant beans with it, put that on the 1790. Um, we'll probably put it on the disc in the fall. I would assume Phil will keep using the 8430 to plant wheat with. We're going to put that 8430 on the disc in the spring so that we're not switching back and forth because we had been using the uh, 9510R and unhooking the field cultivator and hooking the disc up and it was just a lot and this gives us a more capable tractor to pull that disc in the spring. That one doesn't have enough power. It's not big enough to pull our disc and so it didn't work very good uh, for for that application anyway. So um, so yeah, so we're we're jobs at a time basically and uh, uh, I we had considered trading the 8430 in or selling that one instead of the 8300 because that tractor is just I just I love that tractor it's a great tractor my dad likes that tractor um, but it's not as capable as a backup if something should God forbid something should happen to this one or more likely the 8R uh, we've got one that we can hook that planter up to and go and it, it doesn't take anything really just switching some stuff around so um, we decided to hang on to the 8430, and, and I, it is not lost on me how much of a luxury it is to be able to have a backup tractor as an 8430 that's, that's a, yeah, that's, that's a luxury. I'm well aware. As far as the model and how we ended up with a 370, um, so Deer does make a 410 version, an 8RX 410 that's a little bit bigger. Um, but, but keep in mind, we're coming from an 8335R. So, so this has already got 35 horsepower more than the tractor that we have been using for the same jobs. Uh, now, I have heard that the tracks pull a little bit harder and it takes a little bit more power just to move the tractor because of that. Uh, so I expect similar or slightly better performance from this one than what we had with the 8R. Um, but we don't need more power. I definitely do not need this big of a tractor to pull a 16-row planter. Doesn't need it. Don't need it at all. It will come in really nice on the grain cart. We could use more power on our grain cart, and this will get hooked onto our disc at times, uh, and it will be nice to have a little extra power there as well. And I think it will be nice on that side dress bar. The 8R handled it just fine, but this will handle it better. And the weight and the, the tracks, the traction and stability of it will be really nice on that as well. Um, so, so that's why, that's why we went with the 370, uh, 18 inch tracks, like I said, for going down the rows, because, because the, the, the you, I would love to be able to run wider tracks, 24s or 30s, but I, even 24s planting would be just fine. It's the side dress application that becomes an issue. And we considered, uh, not worrying about that and just taking the one with the wider tracks on it to use for, uh, uh, everything but side dress and just using the 8R or the 8430 to keep putting our nitrogen on, but decided that if we're going to tracks to reduce compaction, we need to do it as much as we can. And uh, so that's how we, we decided on this. I think a two track would work okay. I think this will work better. Um, I was not opposed to a two track machine, but this is what the dealer had and was available and I'm not gonna complain. Um, let's see, other questions. Uh, as far as ordering it and stuff, somebody asked if we had to order it or if they had it on the lot. We got really, really lucky with this one, right? So equipment is extremely hard to find right now, as everybody knows. And um, uh, uh, when I texted the dealer and asked him what they had, the dealer had stock ordered this last year at some point. And so they had it. It was actually in the showroom at one of their locations uh, and unsold. And so... Uh, while, while they're not easy to find, we, we got really lucky there and found this one, so we did not have to uh, order it a year out 
I mean, if, if we would order a tractor today or when we bought this one, I don't think we would have seen it until at least August, September timeframe, if even for the fall. So, um, yeah, and somebody asked the price on it. I'm not going to give you a specific, but it is not a cheap tractor. You guys can go and look up the list price if you really, really want to. Nobody pays list, but still, uh, they're not cheap. It was less than a combine, though. I can tell you that. Okay, sorry for the long monologue there, but um, at least you got pretty views of a nice, cool tractor. So I'm going to go grab some lunch, and uh, i got to run a package to the shipping place, um, and then we'll come back, and we'll put our ceramic coating on. I've got it right here. We'll talk about this when I get back, but it's uh, Armor Shield 9 Avalon Kings. It's a, it's a high-quality coating. Okay, I am back from lunch. Our tractor is dried. It's clean. It's beautiful. Let's make it really shine. Okay, so we are ready for our ceramic coating. And so we've got this fancy little applicator sponge with a cloth that goes on it. This is the bottle of coating. It's super expensive. It's like a, I don't know, $35 a bottle when I bought this. I've had it for quite a while. Um, this is what I got left of the three kits that I bought initially. So should be plenty in there to do this tractor at least once, maybe twice. Um, and we'll put it on there. It's uh, it's super easy to do. You just put some drops of it on this cloth and then wipe it on. I'll show you as we do it. You kind of go cross crisscross pattern. Let it set for two or three minutes, and then we'll use our towel and buff it off, and that's it. And it's a lot easier than wax, and it's a lot better. Okay, I've gone around the back of the tractor, did those rear fenders, sides, back. Uh, and around the top what I could reach I need to find a way to get up on top because I can't reach it And I got water spots up there and I I did the edges, but I just I can't get up there very good So I'm gonna show you how to do this or how I do it um, basically you try and Keep this applicator wrapped on that foam As best we can as tight as we can. This is gonna be a lot harder one-handed than two-handed but all right so then I'm gonna put a couple of drops on it I'm actually gonna set this down and we're gonna just put a few drops like that and keep that tight okay and now we wipe it on so we'll go this way I'm gonna do the other side as well because I can reach it from here And then we go across it. And that's just ensuring that we've got it nice and level and even and a good application. We don't miss any spots. I'm gonna go ahead and do that little bit. And that little bit. And this little bit. Okay, now it's got to set for one to two minutes. And if you look real close, you can see the streaks in it there a little bit. So after we let that dry for a second. Okay, now we're gonna take our clean microfiber and we're just gonna buff it off. Oh, it's pretty. And that's it. Now it needs to cure for two hours to get dust proof. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, so we're finishing up this side. Got to do a little bit more up front here and then the other side yet. Uh, as I was saying before, this um, ceramic needs to cure for a couple of hours i think they said like four hours before you can really touch it and stuff but the longer you can give it before it gets wet the better it's four or five days it's ideal so i mean we're gonna we're gonna keep it inside for the most part it might not be in here but it'll be inside and oh it's it's beautiful okay i've got the coating on everything that needs it we might do a little more buffing and polishing and i'm gonna clean up some of the areas where i've been standing and getting it dirty like that um, but this bottle is 
Well, there's just a little bit in the bottom of it. Now we used a little more than half of what was left in there, a little more than a quarter of a bottle um, to do that whole tractor. So I could probably do the hood again if I wanted to or figure out how to get up on top of the cab or something like that. But uh, yeah, we're getting her. She's all shined up. All right, well, we've got that uh, new tractor all shined up as much as we're gonna get it, I think. Uh, so we're gonna shift gears here a little bit. Phil uh, wants to get this semi in the shop to replace the fuel sending unit that fell off and broke inside there. And while we're at it, we're gonna fix our steps that are a little boogered up, um, don't ask, but we need new tank straps. So I just wanted to measure and make sure we get the right thing and that everything fits right and we're gonna get some parts coming and probably try and get this in the shop, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, I don't know, we'll see. Now, from my quick internet research, these should be a 23 inch diameter tank, are they? Mm. Pretty darn close to 23. I would say yes. They should be the same. So we just got a length. length that changes with different size tanks. Yeah, so so the strap should fit any 23 inch diameter tank. We just need two of them. The steps are still good. They'll bolt on the new ones. Our tank's got a slight dent in it, but I don't think that will matter. Okay, well, I got some uh, new straps ordered for that fuel tank on that truck. Uh, they should be here on Thursday. So. Um, while I told you yesterday that we were going to get a corn planter or a planter in general in the shop, probably a bean planter this week, uh, that's looking less likely now. So uh, I didn't know that truck needed to come in the shop here, and it'll be really hard to get it in once the planter is in here. So we're going to do it first because the planter might be here for a couple of weeks. Um, so we're going to move some stuff around tomorrow and get that truck in here. Uh, probably just leave these two tractors in here and park this back out of the way and bring the truck in the front here because I won't have to take it out. We got room for that. Um, but we gotta we gotta get the fuel out of that tank. We gotta take it off and get the new straps. And uh, there's a mirror in a box over here for it. We've got to replace that. So minor stuff, but we'll try and do that over the next couple of days and uh, work on something different. And we'll have this in the background so you guys can keep looking at it. I mean, I want to keep looking at it, so I assume you do as well. So anyway, thanks for watching today. Questions and comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. She's beautiful. She's just. Beautiful. Now all I have to do is learn how to drive it. So I'm still reading through the book. I am one of those guys. I'm weird, I know. I'm probably the only one of those guys, but I will read that cover, that manual, basically cover to cover, anything that applies minus the safety section because it's boring, um, so that I can learn how to run this tractor. And uh, a lot of it is just get it and do it, but at least I am exposed to it ahead of time and stuff. So we're working our way through it. And uh, yeah. We're gonna, like I said, I was saying earlier, we're gonna let it sit in here to, to cure and that ceramic coating to be, yeah, it's, it's good. It's just good, it's just good. So thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for me, please. See you tomorrow. Oh, quick update on the building progress before I go. Uh, they've got four of the trusses up and connected together and they got the header in. So there's another uh, truss, I guess, that, uh, goes right in the middle of that doorway and it's supported by the header there and then the, the end wall and then they gotta tie it into the, the old part, which I'm not sure how that's all gonna happen yet, but they'll figure it out.